wrapping it up right now from Liam uh, Cronin. I'm on my fifth move. And Lorenz do. Six and West move. I can see it all. Down to my head. That's my little dude. Look at Kenzo. Slagging like a fish. Liam Cronin, everybody. Give it up. When I first started comedy, if you told me that I was gonna have to follow Jim Gaffigan, Dan, and that Indian guy, I would have lost him. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, I was thinking about my dad here today. It's his 60th birthday, and I could just think about calling him up like just before and, and saying, "Dad, it's Liam. I'm, I'm sharing this name with Jim, Jim Gaffigan," and I can only anticipate his response being. Liam, we haven't spoken in 15 years. Who's your dad? Have him on number. Oh, uh, guys, give it up for Josh Levine. Josh, a uh, sincere thank you for me to make that the easiest possible act to ever follow. Uh, all right, guys, my name is Liam. Uh, a lot of my childhood friends are here. We were talking about childhood memories a little bit ago. I think my favorite childhood memory is my dad not asking me if I'm gay every day? <laughs> uh, and to be honest with you guys, I'm pretty nervous up here. Like, usually when I invite people to shit, nobody comes. And um, a lot more of you showed up than I had expected. So I like. <laughs> so anyway, my name is Liam. If you don't know who I am, if you've never seen me perform, that means that you were not at the SUNY Old Westbury Student Union Talent Show on March. <laughs> You're lost. I was absolutely fucking hell of a time. <laughs> So, uh, when I was younger, I was like, I'm never gonna be like my dad, right? But as I get older now, like in the twilight of my life, I, uh, I see myself getting more and more like my father, and it scares the shit out of me. Like last week, I started cheating on my mom. <laughs> so I ran into my high school girlfriend last week, and uh, we were at like, this high school reunion, and I swear to God, she must have been 350 pounds. And I was like, you look great, when did you lose all that weight? <laughs> I wanna make a, uh, a t-shirt that says, if you're blind, fuck you. <laughs> I was, uh, so I've been working at Saturday Night Live for the past like six, seven months. And uh, yeah. before that, I had like a normal, like a sales job. I was uh, selling pills up by the middle school. <laughs> But I've been doing a lot of interviewing lately, and I actually interviewed today. Um, I think it went really well. They were gonna offer me the job, but I, uh, I failed the urine test. I like kept missing the girl's mouth. <laughs> uh, I had my dad actually, I, you guys remember when your dad would sit you down and, and tell you about the, the sex talk, like the birds and the bees? I was thinking about this the other day. And uh, I was probably like 11 or 12, and my dad walks in and goes, Liam, it's me, your dad. Uh, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the birds and the bees. I don't really know how to do this, so just watch this video of a bird and a bee fuck. <laughs> so I've been, living, um, I've been living at home lately with my parents, and like, it's like very similar to Honestly, like, I, I've lived with my best friends as roommates, I've lived with my parents, and like, it's, I really can't tell the difference. Like, imagine if two of your roommates were in the middle of a divorce. <laughs> but since I've been living at home, I have like a, I don't know, I've been getting like a hunch, like, I have this weird inclination that one of my dads might be gay. <laughs> uh, yeah, I just, I can't tell if it's like my top dad or my bottom dad. I don't really know. Um, fucking hostile divorce. <laughs> so it's pretty much like that. <laughs> I have one impression. I'm not a big impression guy, but like I, I've been working on one impression. This is my impression of an entitled rich kid with gay parents. <laughs> oh, you wait, you, you better wait. Do you know who my fathers are? <laughs> 
So uh, lately I've been thinking about like... <laughs> so I was fucking this white girl on Hinge, right? And uh, I mean, things started going pretty well in the beginning, like, you know, things were going... Um, so I was dating this girl on Hinge among the apps, the big app guy. And, and uh, I met this girl on Hinge, we were dating for a while. It was going pretty well in the beginning. And then um, it started to like get a little bit weird. Like I couldn't, like I can't put my finger on it, but like you know when you drive by a restaurant that used to be a Pizza Hut, but it's now something else, and they didn't like change the roof. <laughs> like a little off. And uh, I asked her. I asked her. I was like, so what's going on? She goes, honestly, I think we should just be friends. Like, you know, I think you're too self-conscious about things. And also, I'm used to fucking black guys, and you're just not doing it for me. <laughs> fucking black guys, and like, you're just not doing it for me. <laughs> and I'm like, what do you mean? Kind of like when you go to a comedy show, and Jim Gaffin goes up, and then I go up? <laughs> She's like, yeah, exactly like that. <laughs> and I was like... <laughs> and I'm like, well, first of all, like, that's not what you say to somebody whom you believe to be self-conscious about that. <laughs> but also, I, like, I was always under the impression that I have like a, a PhD, a pretty huge dick. And uh, <laughs> I mean, I remember one day, I thought this for such a long time, I remember one day we were, we were at camp and we were changing out of our uh, swimming clothes into our uh, tennis clothes. You know, like rich white kids. And uh, we were in the changing room, and we were all like circled behind, like backs to one another. And one day, we all were just like, you know what, fuck it. Cards on the table. Everyone showed their dicks. <laughs> Turn around. And we're like, let's go. What's up? What's up? How you doing? Another. And we we're like, all right. And, like everyone's, it's kind of like a like don't ask, don't tell policy in there. Like changing. Everyone's got their bare asses to the circle. And then one day, we like started. And we we're like, you know, everyone show your dicks. Like, <laughs> there are a lot of British kids at the camp. <laughs> and. Uh, <laughs> So we were in the circle, everyone just fucking meeting hands. And, uh, and uh, I had easily the biggest dick in the whole circle. And I'll never forget it because almost in unison, everyone else in the circle looked, looked at me and said, Liam, you're easily the coolest camp counselor we have ever had. <laughs> and said, Liam, you're easily the coolest camp counselor I have ever fucking had. <laughs> so uh, I was fucking this Chinese girl on Hendrick. And uh, her profile said she was 18, but like, the jury is still out. Um, and she was Chinese, she had just come over, she was probably like an NYU student or something like that. And I, uh, and we started hooking up, and uh, I brought her out one night. She like barely spoke any English, and uh, I brought her out one night to meet my friends. And uh, I introduced them, and my friend Adam pulled me aside. He goes, "Liam, you're fucking that girl." I go, "Yeah." He goes, "She is way too young." And I go, "How'd you already know her name?" <laughs> so I was fucking this Spanish girl on hand, right? And she is like from Colombia, and she like just she had just gotten uh, like off the boat or whatever. And uh, we we meet up at this club, and like the language barrier is real. And uh, but you know there's just sexual tension. Uh, and we started talking. She was speaking Spanish, I was speaking English, but she barely like spoke a word of English. And uh, so we start start hooking up. Go back to her place, and uh, start fucking like she was kind of a freak, like toys and everything. She started like screaming all this dirty talk in Spanish, but I couldn't, like, does anybody know the translation for no, no, no? <laughs> so, uh, I actually injured my shoulder jerking off last week. Luckily, I was already in the doctor's office when it happened, but uh, I walked into the doctor's office, I go, Doc, you gotta check this out. Like, what's, you know, he's like, all right, tell me what's wrong. I go, you know, this and this. He goes, oh, well, it looks like you're, uh, Shoulders broken and you got some scabs all over your dick. And I go, enough of this medical jargon, doc. <laughs> Speak to me like a real guy. Come on. Uh, yeah. Thank you. So uh, I've been, I've been trying to like, I've been considering like quitting drinking lately. Yeah, I've been blacking out a lot. Like once I start, I can't stop. I got no self control. I black out. Drinking kind of like distracts me from my long term goals. It alienates me from my friends and loved ones. And uh, 
I don't really have a good joke for this. I just wanted to get that off my chest. <laughs> So, uh, actually, this is a true story after all that bullshit. I was at the doctor today. I was at the doctor today. I literally wrote this joke on the way in. And uh, I was at the doctor today. My hand, I've been getting like hypertension because of all the drugs I take. And, uh, no, I've been getting like hypertension, like high blood pressure. My fingers fucking hurt all the time. I like my toes, my fingers, toes. And uh, like it feels like they're like hot, like pins and needles, like really, really hot. And I was trying to tell this to the doctor. And she was like, so, like explain it to me. I go, it feels like, honestly, they're so hot. It feels like there's like a a candle like underneath all my fingertips. She's like, what do you mean? And I go, remember when you were a kid and you would come home maybe with like a B plus in math and you know, you would tell your parents and they would say, okay, let's do your homework together. And you would do your math homework and for every right answer, your dad would put the match a little bit lower and every wrong answer, your dad would put the match a little bit higher, closer to your fingers so that you learn faster. It was kind of like that. <laughs> She's like, no, I don't get it. <laughs> You're an illicit psychiatrist. Uh, <laughs> Lately, I've been thinking about phrases and like catchphrase, like sayings, like how they came to be. Like, I don't know, something kind of about the English language, kind of like link language, kind of like fascinates me. And uh, the first phrase that I thought about was a baker's dozen. It means 13, right? right. But like, <laughs> she went to bigger school. <laughs> this is a hot red heaven before, from the earlier in the show. See how I made that connection? Uh, but it means 13, but literally like only inside the confines of a bakery. Nowhere else does it mean 13. Like I was in the bakery the other day and I was getting, um, I, I, it doesn't matter because I'm making this whole thing up, but um, <laughs> I was getting like, but, Literally only inside the walls of a bakery. Like I was, <laughs> I was at the bakery the other day and I was getting, um, it doesn't matter because I'm making this up, but, um, <laughs> but, uh, but um, I was getting like 13 croissants, <laughs> croissants. And, uh, and, they, <laughs> and I said, yeah, I'll have a baker's dozens of those croissants over there. And the baker was like, speak my fucking language, baby. <laughs> This guy fucking gets it. Uh, but I mean, that's, that's after you leave the walls of the bakery, that's fucking it. Uh, you're never gonna like turn on the news and you know, gonna hear a story like, hello, this is David Muir. It's a busy Tuesday today. The mass shooting in Florida, death toll has reached a baker's dozen. <laughs> in a busy Monday tonight, the mass shooting in Florida, death toll's at a baker's dozen. <laughs> The next, uh, the next phrase that I really cannot understand at all is uh, smoother than a baby's bottom. <laughs> Who was the fucking pervert that declared a baby's bottom to be the pinnacle of all things smooth? Um, like I can only imagine like, I don't know, at one point in time, a boss walks in, two employees are there. So how did the uh, client meeting go yesterday? I was like, oh, it went well, it was, went smoothly. I was like, try, be thinking about this for a long time, because it went smooth. You could say it was smoother than a baby's body. And the guy's like, Jesus Christ, David, I didn't need that fucking visual, I got it, it went smooth. Get your shit and get out of here. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Liam! Yeah. 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 Yeah.
We live for today, bitch. Fuck up out my way, bitch. I'm losing all my aces. I'm running out of patience. Got some pretty faces. No one with my name is up in high places. I got some new neighbors. They don't really say shit, but when they see the spaceship, they just think I rap or some for me.